Good morning. So I was uh, reading through my scriptures this morning, uh, looking at the uh, chronological Bible, which has truly been a blessing, especially in the Gospels, where you get to see Matthew and Mark and Luke and John and their uh, spirit-inspired presentations of what they experienced in the life of Christ. Sorry. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Um, we just got to um, Matthew 21, Mark Luke 11, Luke 19, we see um, this interesting uh, passage. You find that the Gospels, it's beautiful how, how they, they come together. I think I'm going to go and, and make it a point in my studying and preaching Bible. Start to put little notes next to them, next to the passages of where they connect in the, uh, the other Gospels. Because I noticed this, um, Christ had just rolled into the city as uh, all nations who were there to fear the Most High God and to give Him reverence and to, uh, and to show praise unto Him during the feast time had gathered together from far and wide, truly of all nations of the earth, um, who had spiritually joined with the nation of Israel. And perhaps some there just for the festivities and hoopla of it all. Nevertheless, the city, more packed than it ever had been, saw this marvelous sight of the Lord of Lords come into Jerusalem upon a colt, upon the fall of an ass, sitting upon the garments of the disciples, The nations threw palm branches at his feet, waved them, and cried, Hosanna in the highest, calling him king. And uh, I, I love how you captured this in Luke. I believe uh, the Pharisees take offense and say, Bid your disciples see, stop. Stop this. This is this is blasphemy, or so it was in their eyes. And he says, I tell you, if these were to cease, the stones would cry out. And I, I love that. I love that illustration. Um, God God uses anything to receive glory into himself and to speak his message. Truly, were men and women to cease from declaring the glorious coming of the king. The stones would do it for them. Wow. That's both uh, an encouragement and an indictment. <laughs> I don't think that's the word. So, the true point of what I found this morning was in Matthew 21. When Jesus proclaims, my house shall be called. And this was after he entered in and he finally got to the temple area. And he finds they're in money changers and then they're bought and sold. And he finds, he finds all sorts of to-dos going on financially, exchanging of, of hand, of money and, and, and uh, interest, I believe, was was being accumulated and and uh, just 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 business in general is being done 
in the presence of, of God and truly in God's house. And, and Christ, rightfully so, is, is filled with such anger and indignation at, at truly what is, what is blasphemous toward his, his, his God and his Father. Is, is that men would buy and sell in the house of God. Nothing wrong with buying and selling and nothing wrong necessarily with exchanging of, of money. Again, they came from all nations. They have they have different uh, amounts and the currencies have to be exchanged into, into a common dollar in order for everything to agree and checks and balances and so on and so forth. But the fact that all this was being done in the house of God is what caused Christ such hurt, anger, frustration, rage, so that he 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 ran about the place and and, and uh, kicked over the tables and and turned over the the vessels full of money and and threw everything in all directions and and and, and he cried out. My house shall be called the house of prayer. Mark records the same. My house shall be called, that's in chapter 11, the house of prayer. And Mark adds, of all nations. It's who shall call it this. And I love this, the, the, the declaration of a, of, a, of a word of God from from old time is 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 Christ again just just reaching out to these people and saying have you not read have have you not heard have you not understood what my god is saying that this house is not for buying and selling these days we do it with with CDs and and books from from traveling missionaries. I believe that to be wrong, even as it is in this day, exchanging of money in the house of God. The only thing that was to be brought to the house of God was bringing the tithes and the offerings to the storehouse. Bring to God these finances that he may use them as resources for his glory. Don't exchange them amongst yourself. Don't don't buy and sell and, and, and do these things. He says, my house shall be called of all nations a house of prayer. Shall be was what it said in Mark 21. Shall be was what was said in Mark chapter 11. Um, a past statement reaching forward into the present reality. But Luke captures it. In Luke 19 verse 46 where he says, my house is the house of prayer. My house is the house of prayer. Matthew says it shall be called. Mark says it shall be called. Luke says my house is the house of prayer. So first and foremost, I think that's that's what we ought to consider when we come to God's house, when we come to God's presence, when we come to the church building, when we come to the meeting room, when we come to uh, the the time of devotion, even with family, uh, I believe all of these could be could be for a moment a house of God, a, a, a gathering, an assembly where where Christ is with two or three gathered together. Of course, everything in due order, but I'm not speaking of that now. He says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. And we ought to consider that when we come to gather together. We ought to consider that this is a time of prayer, of asking, of seeking God. And prayer is a two-way street. I don't know who said it. And I don't endorse all of his words, but I heard one ask, what, what is most important, um, you know, reading the word of God or prayer? And the response was given, well, what's more important, breathing in or breathing out? <laughs> so the house of 
prayer is this time where we hear from God through his word and we meditate upon those things and we speak back to God, whether that's songs, hymns, and spiritual songs, or, or, or crying out from our hearts, um, our, our, our deepest, our deepest, uh, thoughts and ambitions and desires and, and, uh, challenges and struggles and, and speaking those out to God in order that he could then what? Speak back to us through his word. And it's, and it's that time of exchange. It's that place of exchange. It's the house of prayer. And it shall be called that. But it is it indeed. So I ought to consider that when I go to gather together with God's believers. In, in the church. In the congregation. In the assembly. That is, this is the time for reciprocating conversation and communication with the Holy One of Israel, with the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, with my God. Another application just plainly here in the text, I hear that he's saying, look what was said in the past, what was said as a, as a shall be in the scriptures, presently is. He says it shall be called, it shall be called, it is the house of prayer in those three accounts from the scriptures so we need to in our hearts and our minds understand that as we hear the word of God come to us and it says it shall be it shall be it shall be well those things in the eyes of God presently are I've often looked at the Ten Commandments in that way where their list of to do's and to not do's surely but they're also the present reality to my born again sinless state that is reserved in heaven somewhere because I find it hard to see that now sitting every day as I do whether in thought or deed but the Bible says thou shalt not steal thou shalt not um, covet etc. Presently, in Christ, born again, walking as he walks, when I am in that spirit, I don't steal. I don't covet. I don't kill. The redeemed fallen believer is only a step of faith away from essentially practically being sinless. I want to be careful here, but but my redeemed portion is sinless, for it is in Christ, for it is where he is seated in heavenly places. God doesn't dwell with, can't even look upon iniquity and yet here he abides within me. How is that so? There is a sinless portion of me. There is a redeemed portion of me. It must be awful for it to dwell in this vessel as it does. But I need to render that to be so. In truth, so much of our walk is based on our faith. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk him. I received him by faith. Righteousness was imputed unto me because I believed and trusted upon him. As I have received him, so I need to walk in him. Receive righteousness. Receive not only salvation, but sanctification and growth by faith, by trusting that the old man is dead and I am alive and the life which I now live in the flesh I live according to the faith of the Son of God which loved me and gave himself for me. Indeed I sin not only through faith in what has been proclaimed of Christ. Christ in me the hope of glory. What a glorious truth that is. I 
I love my Lord Jesus for that truth. If righteousness came by the law, <laughs> whether by salvation or sanctification, it's, it's a lost cause. I'm a lost man. I am of all men most miserable, even as is the state if there were no resurrection. If I just can't simply put my faith in God and allow Him to carry me, carry me to His will, put in me both to will and to do of His good pleasure, if I can't just trust in the Almighty God to succeed and to have victory through me, then I'm lost. I'm hopeless. But today I stand hopeful in the God of all. I stand hopeful in Him, trusting in Him, and therefore I stand redeemed. My part is to confess my sins, and if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. My, my, my position, my lot is to simply not deny my sin. He comes in, and as he promised, look, as he said, it shall be it shall be it is so I encourage myself first and everybody else to go and to look for some promises of God where he says it shall be you shall be changed in the moment of a twinkling eye at the last trump shall be given that glorified body you shall be without spot and unfortunately I didn't prepare a list of them that's why I'm saying I encourage myself and others to go ahead and do that study you can find those in those those little booklets that that they sell at the, the bookstores those little um, promises of God leaflets you know the blessed promises the shall be's that are proclaimed throughout history and just look at those and trust that those shall be's truly are present realities you shall be changed well today I sit with God in Christ. <coughs> my house shall be called of all men. The house of prayer, my, sh my house shall be called the house of prayer. Well, Luke says my house is. What a faithful step we ought to all seek to take. Grab hold of a promise and embrace it. That promise is mine. Not for my sake or for anything that I have done. That promise is mine because of who gave it to me. Who bought it for me. Who possessed it at once in order that they could present it to me. Glory be to God. Amen.